Well, hi again, kids. Pastor Al here. It's nice to see you again. Well, I guess I should probably say nice to be seen again because we don't really get to see each other like this. Hey, um, I want to talk with you about people who do stupid things. And the one I want to talk about maybe the most is me. Um, but first, I want to talk about dogs. Because one of the funny things about dogs is as much as I like dogs, one of the things I find about dogs is sometimes dogs get kind of snarky or kind of fight with each other over stupid things. Let me show you a, a couple examples of dogs who might be fighting over something that's not that important or, or just trying to make one dog know that they're in charge and the other dog's not. Now, if you think that dogs can fight over nothing, let me give you an example of how people can fight over nothing. And, well, it comes from when I was a kid. Um, you, you girls probably already know that boys do stupid things when they're young and you know, actually when they're old. But I remember one of the favorite games that we often played as I was growing up, and we played it in different fashions, was kind of the game called King of the Hill. We had different names for it, and we did it differently. But generally the rule was this. Somebody would get up on top of something that was fairly high. When I was a kid at home, it was a bed. I was in junior high. It might have been the uh, the pad that people jumped into when they were doing a high jump. And then you tried to get to the highest point, and then everybody else tried to throw you off and get onto that point themselves. Uh, or maybe we had a football, and you tried the whole lot of the football. Well, everybody jumped all over you and tried to get it from you. Now, there were kind of a, a lot of unwritten rules about this game. You couldn't actually just like physically hit and kick somebody, but you could do a lot to make them hurt. Pull, grab, shove, elbow, uh, do all sorts of stuff so that it got to the point where either you shoved them off where you were, they were, and you took their spot up on the top of the hill, or you made them hurt so bad that they gave up that football or baseball or ball they were holding in. You got to hold it while now all of the other guys jumped all over you and tried to get it from you. By the way, you know what you won if you won that game? Nothing except a bunch of bruises. But somehow deep inside of us, we wanted to be the king. We wanted to be the top. Um, we felt that there was something cool if we could just be the one who stayed up there for a little while. That showed there was something important about us. We kind of wanted to be the king even though we didn't have anything to win and we had no kingdom to rule. That's something that people do a lot. We try to make ourselves very important. We try to be in charge of our lives. We try to be, well, we try just to be something extra special when there's really nothing to win. This Sunday, today, 
in the church year is a Sunday we call Christ the King Sunday. It's a day that we celebrate who the real king of the world, not just the world really, the whole king of all creation, of all the universe really is. And that's Jesus our Lord. In fact, when you say Lord, you're saying that he's the one that rules your life. A lot of times in our life, we try to rule our own life and do our own thing. Um, when I was a kid, of course, we played a game to do it. But we were kind of just practicing for when we got older. When we were still going to find a way to try to be the top and not really realize that we didn't have anything to win. One day, everyone is going to stand before Jesus. And those people who have loved him during their life, who have accepted his love, are going to feel pretty cool about that because they've already made him the king of their own hearts. And that's going to be wonderful. One day, people are going to go before him who really don't care at all about God. And they're going to discover that he really was the person that they should have been following and worshiping as king. Um, we're so glad that Jesus loves us and has called us to know who he is right now. So you're going to go through your life, and I hope that you will learn some lessons from this. That you will realize that there are some things that are really worth working hard for, even fighting for. But that those aren't the things that just make us think that we are something extra special. They might be things that really matter, but the thing that matters most is always making sure that Jesus is our king, that we follow our king everywhere our king wants us to go, and that we accept his rule in all of the parts of our life. God made us to want to have a king, not an earthly king, a king like Jesus, who loved us, who died for us, who showed us what real leadership is really like, and who wants us to follow him now and forever. That's the kind of king that we should really get excited about. Kids, nice talking to you this morning. You have a wonderful day. And hey, by the way, have an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving. I know some of you will probably not be able to do some of the family things you normally do, and that'll be a disappointment, but you know what? We're beating this thing, and next year is gonna be different. So God bless you, take care, be safe, and remember how much Jesus our King loves you. The kind of King that you can love back. Bye-bye, everyone.